Welcome to this week's caucus uh, edition. The, the meeting has been. Uh, um, what is what happens with the meeting? It starts. It, it starts. starts. Yes. <laughs> and you can see us today. You can. We've, yeah. got, we've got pictures and everything. We've got technology. I'm, um, it is just gone eleven o'clock on Thursday morning. I'm Tim Watkin. I'm Lisa Owen. And I'm Guy Espiner. And on caucus this week, it's preview. They've been preview fighting. Yes, they have. Sorry, I couldn't resist that. To sing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, who knew that figures could be so interesting and exciting, eh? Because this is a game changer in my view. So they open the books because they have to before the election. It's a legal requirement. Everybody gets to see how many lollies in the jar. And oops, guess what? It's half empty. Not so many lollies. I've never seen a finance minister quite so happy to be able to say the books aren't in quite as good an order as we thought they were. Hooray! Because it means National can actually try and squash down some of Labor's potential spending. Took the jar slightly out of um, Jacinda Ardern's reach, reach uh, yeah. there, but also out of their own reach and your, any hopes of um, the National might have had for a big um, tax cut that would um, help them in, in the campaign uh, off off the agenda. But they did. He did seem relieved, didn't he? It was kind of a mutually uh, assured sort of um, reduction, if you like, in terms yeah. of spending, wasn't weapons. it? Hand Hand in in it, it was. They both put their clubs down, the, the, or they took the clubs off the other one. Nas National ha was potentially going to have the club to say um, to attack Labour for, um, you know. Tax increases, tax increases to the top. Um, Labour walked away from that one. National was um, potentially going to be attacked by Labour for prioritising tax cuts over over health and education. Um, National said we don't want to be hit by that club, so yeah. hand it over. I mean, to look at the numbers, there was an interesting stuff in there. And yes, it was uh, interesting from the point of view as who's got money to spend and what they're going to spend it on. But just to look at those books and see that in the short term, obviously, they're expecting more money. What was it? Two Another point, two billion two, two point odd, one yeah. billion odd. Right. But in the long term, things are sort of filtering off. It's not as good as they thought it was going to be. Um, and so long term spending, you can't start a project or commit money to a project yeah. that you going to have to keep propping up for the next three, six, nine years. And then um, growth is slowing down, obviously, and there was a lot of talk about the fact that we are maxing out in terms of our capacity around construction and and um, that there's little room to move there. They talked about immigration winding down. Well, that, so, which so always, I, this is fascinating. For the they, last four, They keep last projecting four? that immigration yeah, is going to suddenly doesn't. drop off to 20,000. But never overall, has. would you be that... Would you be that stoked about that? Well, I mean, the books are in pretty reasonable yeah. order, and you've got unemployment yeah. tracking down to 4.3% in a few years' time. If that happens, that's going to be pretty good, and you would imagine that, that would then put upward pressure on wages, which have been very low, and I think that's connected to the yes. immigration story. Yeah. One figure that I was interested in was that in the next four years, with immigration, we're bringing in... 212,000 more people. I mean, that's yeah. about half the size of Christchurch. So they are still pretty big numbers. And as I think you guys are alluding to, the Treasury keeps saying, oh, they're going to stop they're gonna coming soon. So <laughs> but, but there's no sign of that no, actually no. Uh, happening. And they and, do. And, you look in the notes and they say, there is considerable uncertainty oh, around yeah. population projections. And Stephen so Joyce denies know. that there's a connection between that and the very low wage growth, which we saw 1.2% wage growth to the June 2017 year. Yeah. If you look at just the private, the sector, private sector, he denies that that's uh, connected to immigration. I, I struggle to agree Public with that. Public sector, 4.1%. And Driven so by those big um, agreements. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. But the thing about that is you were asking just today, Stephen Joyce, what he's going to spend his spare money on, and he obviously wasn't going to give that away or even how much of his spare money he was going to spend. But he did keep saying to you that um, he has to bear in mind uh, pressure on health, pressure on education, which again, it's all related to it's immigration. People. It's let's, people. Have a, let's have a listen. Um, Jeremy, Jacinda um, uh, did deal with the top tax, top tax rate question um, in very at the front of her press conference yesterday and said this. We've looked at the books and what's available now. We believe we can deliver on what our policy intentions are with what is uh, available. Um, so we will not be campaigning on a top tax rate. Um, I have no intention of giving that to the tax working group that we'll be establishing, and it's not part of our plan. See, she finally ruled it out. To me, I'm struggling to actually bring a coherent uh, line into this Labour thinking. They seem to be saying, well, there wasn't as much revenue coming in as we thought, therefore 
we don't need the extra revenue from the tax <laughs> cuts. It doesn't quite gel with me. I wonder whether they've been a bit spooked, to be honest. And National mm. has been going quite hard on the yep. attack ads, on water tax, on potentially an ETS tax, on a capital petrol gains. tax, and of course the capital gains yeah, tax. Question. And I just wonder whether they've thought, well, we don't need another we... another headache there, and <laughs> we're not going to, to, to raise the top tax rate. But it doesn't really gel to me with what was in the books. Well, no. I think they're running through the house closing a few doors mm. at this point because the capital gains uh, tax is not going away because she keeps saying, and so does Grant Robertson, that this commission will make decisions and she doesn't want to be hamstrung by even stating what her preference is beforehand. That will scare people. It is an unknown. And we also know um, this week we're finding out a little bit more about where she stands on things. Paddy Gower was asking her about um, emissions and charging um, the ETS scheme and she was saying that agriculture will be part of that obviously which they've always said but that there's going to be this environmental commission that they'd set up and that commission will decide and if the commission decides that they're going to levy farmers in essence in that first term she hasn't ruled that out either. Which is really interesting and I, I just want to um, put this on the record too let's not pretend that these are independent groups the tax working group she's been talking about and the um, this group well, that she said I, Grant look, Robertson will appoint. Well, this is right. And, and look, and, and look fair enough. Com tax I've got, commission. I've got no issue with that. But yeah. effectively, you are appointing people that you know will give you the answer yep. roughly that you want. And okay, but th th that's fine. But let's not pretend that that somehow some independent sort of cross-party group. It's nothing no, of the sort. No. It, you, you're actually just contracting it out and saying, look, give us a little bit more time and give us some more expertise and the army of government, and we'll then make a decision for you. I do think that they're a little bit vulnerable on this stuff, especially when yeah. you say we're farming out our water tax policy, our emissions trading um, scheme, yeah. scheme policy, and also our capital gains tax policy, and we'll tell you once we're in government. This is conservative uh, campaigning. This is a party that has been out for three terms that is very scared about getting the wrong thing and, and saying Phil the wrong Twyford thing. said uh, almost exactly that, didn't he? <laughs> that he'd gone to the electorate twice with a specific policy. Exactly, and, and it hadn't mad. worked. And so they're, 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 they are. They're, and, and you know, to be fair, National did it in, in 08 with a couple of policies. It's not uncommon for people who have been out of power for a while to say, these are the kind of changes that we know are acceptable, but we're scared about these other things that we might rattle the horses well, and we're going to keep this back. The, and it's, 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 there's a fear element there, scared definitely. Scared about the details. Oops. Don't <laughs> oh. worry. We're all still here. It's the, all right. the sign has just fallen down. Um, she is using a cl what I would call a climatising language. You know, she's talking about um, the bright line test and saying, well, National already has a capital gains tax. Mm. It's the bright line test test. She's using that sort of acclimatising language. You know, don't be scared. There's already one of those and National brought it yep. in. So They are keeping it tight and, and, and being cautious, definitely. Let's have it. Stephen Joyce um, talked about what the preview meant for him as well yesterday. That means from our perspective uh, we get the opportunity to invest in the public services, uh, invest in the infrastructure, uh, keep the debt track going and then obviously subject to the economy continuing to do as well or better, the opportunity to look at a family incomes package, a second one following the first one on 1 April next year, but not until around that 2020 period. Now, I was really interested in, in his comment there about that 2020 period. He said in, at the press conference, we would look at that family income package. Press release comes out a couple of hours later saying if fiscal conditions um, allow, and they were pretty easy to meet um, fiscal conditions um, according to these tracks. Um, that he would definitely look at that second package. So the headlines yesterday... Conveniently, well, in 2020. In 2020. Well, I can't remember, three years from now, what happens? But isn't it interesting that, that the headlines were national tax, tax cuts off the table. In fact, Stephen Joyce yesterday committed to yeah, tax cuts for 2020. He promised to tax cuts in the next election. So I, I, I was kind of intrigued well, by Well, I think, yeah, it's a managing expectations thing, isn't it? Because this is what I would say about Labour's position. They have been hinting left, right and centre about education, that there's going to be this big announcement around education. And people, there's a sense of anticipation mm. around that and there's a sense of speculation that it would be some kind of benefit. She kind of pulled back, um, Jacinda Ardern pulled back uh, a couple of weeks ago about whether it would be universal. She said that was probably a step too far. There's also been speculation about whether they'll bring forward these three years of free tertiary education. Whole package is not supposed to come in until 2025. It kind of dribbles out one year, two year, yep. three years. But as we said, there's not the money for long term projects. So 
they're going to have to manage, they've built this excitement and anticipation and yeah. they have to manage that back down because they're going to pull the cover off the car, everyone's expecting a Jaguar and what are they getting? <laughs> a, tr <laughs> a trusty Toyota? <laughs> I don't know. Although well, let's not be, I mean, you no. know, um, uh, the, speaking the of trusty Toyota, billion, should, we, should we move to Peter Dunn? <laughs> we could, we could. I just, I just, <laughs> go for it. No, I just saw it. It's interesting to, uh, to, to, to look at Peter Dunn and... Um, I don't know the the optics and the vision around Ooh, that with Peter Dunn. So I, I, I agree, and you know if he really wanted to do Jacinda Ardern a favour and in bed and put the flag up for generational change and to signal that yes the tide is going out on a particular group, then he couldn't have done anything more than walk away from the seat. I actually thought the optics were terrible, and I actually thought that. If I was Stephen Joyce, the campaign manager for National, I'd be really furious with Peter Dunn. After nine years of ministerial spots, after accommodations three times in his electorate, basically, look, I know he campaigned well and did a good job in, as a, a local MP, but basically yeah. being gifted that seat. Mm -hmm. Instead of fighting it out for a possible loss, he puts the flag up and says, look at me, I'm walking away because change is coming. I'd be furious if I was national if that's the payback that I'd got yeah, from Peter Dunn. I, I really think, would be. I think the optics are bad because even though, you know, people say the seat doesn't really matter, it's going to be about the party vote, etc. It is the optics that matter. And it looks like people are fleeing the sinking ship. That is the optics. And they had gone to the trouble. There was a letter. Remember all the tweets about, yeah. um, we're oh, going to... Don't, don't vote yeah. for that. Don't yeah. vote for the national election. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Vote for Dunn and um, just give your party vote to us. They're going to have they have to walk that back. And it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing, and I think he should have pulled his big boy pants on and gone out there and lost with dignity if that was what was going to happen. I totally agree, and I take you back to 2005 when they had gone from a nine seat. Um, result no two yep. to being devastated to about two seats in 2005 and people might well remember the clip of him walking out of the back bench of where his uh, campaign night was and spitting the dummy at Mark Sainsbury who was heading the coverage for TV One. I'm afraid um, Mr Dunn you know you haven't shown that um, you're a terribly good loser. I think he should have I think he should have fought it out I really do. Yeah I'm a little bit more forgiving I guess he I, I think that the Future is very clear for him. The future was not united. Um, he was, <laughs> he was, he was stuck. He had ruled out Labour, um, so he couldn't, he couldn't go with them. Um, the, there is now a clear battle between Labour and National. Um, the Peters will decide that most likely, um, and uh, Peters has got no chops with with Peter Dunn. He really had nowhere to go. Having been a minister under seven prime ministers, he was mm. had no interest in going yeah. to opposition. That's a decision but, you make a so year I, out, I, in my view. And I, also, he yeah, keeps people, telling us there's a party behind it, and, and there yeah. is a party. OK, people joke about that, and so he, he's been just a one-man band for quite a while now. Yeah. But he puts out a party list. He has a deputy who p wasn't even told. Wasn't even told. Um, yeah. and, and, Hours before. And yeah. to pull out at that point, I, I thought it was poor form. And I think his, his mea culpa to Bill English and the National Party is probably in every exit interview that he's given, he keeps saying that. Bill English will be the Prime Minister after yeah, after uh, election night. And he, while he says there was a mood for change, he sniffed a mood for change in Ohario, that it doesn't go broader than that. No, you know, but, he made, no, he made all these... No, but he, but he is trying, uh, as he exits stage left, to do a tiny bit of damage I control yeah. and, but, and throw a bone. But this is the interesting thing, isn't it? Is that the... The the 33 year veteran, the guy who came in in the 84 Labour government. I mean, only Mallard's left now from that intake. Um, it, it, he's he's one of the great boomer politicians in terms of his length of service. Um, it does create that suggestion now that this could be the election, and this is exactly the optics you're talking about. That's that right. Cinder yeah. Dern wants to sell, right? That this is a generational tipping point election. Now we had this is this is a, a, a generation that was gonna that had to an election that had to come that sometime in the next few elections, the boomers would start to fade and the generation Xs and the, and the millennials would start to actually use their weight of numbers to change and, and the direction of New Zealand. It could come that now. That was her campaign speech and that through was, and through. That was just her, 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 yeah, and ju Jacinda Ardern tried to um, capitalise on that with uh, this idea that climate change was the nuclear-free issue of yeah. our generation. Yeah. I mean, that's got a lot of play. Uh, unfortunately, it's not that new because 10 years ago, Michael Cullen made that exact... Uh, analogy saying that it was akin to nuclear free 
I, I went back because I remember him saying this uh, in 2007, and Bill English came out and responded to that by saying that this climate change was an issue for the elites and wouldn't be actually an election issue. Oh, so I think it's a bit only of a, 10 years. It's a bit of a pox on both their houses because um, Bill English, I, I don't know whether he'd stand by that today, that climate change is an issue for mm. the elites. It's certainly what he said before 2008. But also, unfortunately, it's not a, a, a new uh, phrase for, for, for Labour because Michael um, Cullen and Helen Clark were, were saying this 10 years, ten years ago. ago. <laughs> but, but very much so, she grabbed that mantle, obviously, in her campaign launch speech. speech. She talked about um, poverty, which she's all, always been interested in that area in terms of children and, and the portfolio she's held within um, Labour. But I actually looked at this and said, whoa, you're eating the Greens lunch again and just going for it in that respect and when you see for example the Greens suddenly pop up and say <laughs> hey we've decided we're going to chuck a remember guy us? into remember us we're going to chuck a guy into a hardy Peter Dunn's gone um we're back I'm thinking somebody started a bonfire with the MOU, you know, or what's going on? I, I think that Materia Ture started the bonfire with the MOU and, and it's been, it's and, and Labour's failure to actually get traction pre-Jacinda um, started that fire. The, the poor, it's, the it's poor people of um, oh, how do you but must what, be very but, confused about yeah, who's what actually did you make of that? But what did you, is, it, is it a smart move? Is it, I mean, you've always said throughout this whole series of caucus that you have to take no prisoners, go hard, get every vote you can. Absolutely, which is so, why I, I, which is what, what which is, which green... is why I, would, I, I wouldn't have been advising had I been um, fortunate <laughs> enough to room. be uh, the back room. <laughs> and I note that the back room staff in the Greens has changed, changed. quite a bit changed. too, yes. which, which is quite interesting. We, we can talk about that. But um, I, I was never a believer in the strategic um, uh, resonance of an MOU. Hmm. With the Greens and Labour, I never thought that that but was you a don't, goal. You no, don't think, I, I, you don't think this is a middle finger, do you? No, Tara? I don't. I, I think I think it is about for 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 Ardern, um, her position on this is is the generational thing. I don't think I think the Green vote, she's not going after the Green vote any more than she she has. What she's going after is the youth vote. What she's going after is they just happen is, to be the same thing. They do yeah. they do to some extent. Yeah. But yeah. but what it ha what she's going after is a, is the symbol of being the torchbearer for a new generation. That's that's the power that she has. Um, that, and that can resonate across not just green voters, but older voters. I know, I you know, talk to um, to retirees who will say we're really excited about this oh, idea sure. of young people. There's no doubt coming through in a new generation. Up, she's firing up their campaign. That's that's the motivation for her. Climate change is a, is, is is a code for a generational switch yes. more than a political party switch. What about the switch, Greens jumping into their party in Ohario? I, look, I, I think it's perfectly sensible. The Ohario was a special overhang seat. It is not anymore. It's just like any other seat. Mm. Go for broke. I, I think but it, again, um, it creates, optics, it creates a, it? yeah, and it creates a sense of panic. We've seen in the mm. Greens now suddenly um, they're going to stand in Uharu, but they don't want really to contest the electorate vote. They're standing there for party votes. You see the backroom staff, um, c including some quite well-known people like Deborah Morris Travers, mm. who's moving on from chief of staff. One of their key special key, projects, isn't yeah, a special saying? project that she's been given. Uh, it's a real sense of chaos in the in, in the Green Party yeah. and that. I think this sort of adds to that, really, to be honest. And I think that they are they are worried about staying afloat. And um, they've dived into Uharu, but it, it doesn't seem like any part of a, a strategic or coherent strategy. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on with the minor parties in a slightly chaotic sense, isn't <laughs> they're, there, in the past few days? They're trying to get days. noticed, aren't they? Because yeah, they're getting yeah. squeezed, and we've talked about that before. And whether the elephants it means, and the mice. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. whether it means and dropping the F-bomb or however you get into the news or, or talking yeah. about lipstick. Um, okay. They're trying to get into the the news well, coverage. Let's give an example of that. We've got um, David Seymour um, getting a little bit cross with Richard Prosser. The idea that you'd have somebody uh, who pretends to hold the balance of power uh, to come and tell you that a stock trading at 585 is going to be nationalised at 310 and you better all sell it. Well, you know, I realise that in a role such as mine, uh, you're supposed to have a certain amount of decorum. Uh, but that makes me really angry. What a f***ing idiot. I mean, <laughs> seriously. You know? I mean, what an idiot. 
and I think we should say that after the big chair, he said something else, and then the room went quiet. Because which, which was the greater abuse of the English language? Yes, there. Was the, it the, the, the decorum. The decorum. The decorum. <laughs> or the swear or not. Word. Yeah, but yes, after after the applause, he he did the fat sh what's being he, now yeah, called fat he, shaming, right? About did. a man who can't even manage his weight right. shouldn't manage the country. Country, yes. Which which went down like a lead balloon. Yeah, yeah. but the the applause there, obviously, for a business audience was and, was pretty and, good. You know, I think there'd be a, a, a fair bit of sympathy for um, you know the the critique that he was having of uh, the, the policy from New Zealand First, which Buy his own leader energy. disavowed pretty quickly about buying back state yeah. assets at Although, the, the same level that they were sold at, and, and I suppose at the cost well, of expropriating people's contact. gains on them in the yes. meantime. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, if that's the policy you want to have, well, let's let's you know vote on that. But it's you know, I mean, it's, it is. gets into Venezuela territory. It does really, get into Venezuela territory. You're absolutely doing it, but. But it is national. But it is New it's Zealand first policy. policy. It's actually on their website. Absolutely, yeah, it's 20, just that Peters doesn't like it now. I, the interviews from 2013, where, where yeah. Peters are saying they're ahead of the, you know, um, in the last term, saying we will buy back assets, um, the state assets, at the earliest opportunity. We will buy. You know, so this is uh, it was. And to be fair, it was Labour Party policy going into the last election too under David Cunliffe. To yeah, buy so, back so, so and this cost something so, like 11 billion dollars. He's today said that the company tax rate under New Zealand First will go to 25. Yes. It's currently at 28. I haven't done the maths. On what a three point hit on the company tax rate cost you, but it's in the billions again. Yep. Maybe yes, he didn't yeah. see the proof of yesterday because GST <laughs> is, is still GST. And, and his policy of GST off food, I think, has now become GST GS off basic food, which okay, maybe well, has GST changed a little bit. GST off food is between two and three, three billion, billion a, a year. So, so it's the same question. You can, this is the down the barrel question. Mr. Peters, how are you going to pay for this well, stuff? Isn't uh, it? Uh, well, how is your coalition partner going to pay for this yeah, stuff as well yeah. because that's the other thing with the preview and the lack of money to spread around is how you accommodate your buddies' policies as well as your own and there's less swing room to do that. So does this bring a bit more sanity to the remainder of the campaign now that the, um, the, the vodka has been taken out of the punch bowl? No. Probably not, no, <laughs> well, because, no because I don't think David Seymour was wanting to have a policy debate about buying back state assets when he dropped the F-bomb. No. I think he was um, thinking, hmm, can I get myself on the television? He saw a camera down the back of the room. <laughs> yeah. and, but, but and, so and, National, and, and Gareth Morgan's been Gareth quite Morgan. honest, uh, honest about it this well, week he where, totally he actually, about where he actually said, I, he talked about um, lipstick on a pig in terms of the changes the Labour Party have made and a new leader, um, and then said, yeah, policy is what matter, but this is the way. Saying things like yeah. this is how I get attention. Yeah. At least he was honest about just yeah. being a headline grab. Before we go, <laughs> just throwing forward to the weekend, the National yeah. Party uh, launching campaign their launch. campaign. Yeah. I guess they might have been hoping, hoping for a few more lollies to throw around with, with the pre food. But, but they've already where got, do you think they're going to head? No, they've got something. It's wrapped up like a chocolate bar. They already got that there. I yeah. mean, the and thing they're not. And they're not. I made a couple of calls and I'm getting nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. nothing. At all. There is something, though. There is a strong hint that there's going to be Housing? some kind of policy. Well, and the thing is, compare it to last week, no, no policy announcement at the Labour launch. Housing is where they have a weak spot. But we, I don't know. We've been, the last couple of budgets, we've had these same conversations about, oh, there'll be something about housing this time, and there really has been very little. They've they've got their first ho housing, first home buyer scheme, which they're very proud of, and, and they talk about the thousands of people getting help in that. Um, but they haven't been prepared to really enter the market, and it would be very to late in the day to do that to actually build, a mass which project. seems to be yeah. the obvious thing, a, a blue Kiwi build kind of version. But, we've, but like you say, we speculated about speculated that. We've speculated for years, and it yep. never comes. So, What are you picking? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I think that um, they are going to really go down this line. They think that the economic management card um, and being a bit boring is, is working for them. They, they've work. attacked hard on tax. Those, those um, uh, tax ads that you see on Facebook and on Twitter, you, you see them quite a bit. I think they probably w will believe that they're working, that it's the best card they've got. As you guys said, Joyce looked fairly happy that the economy wasn't in quite as good a shape <laughs> a, a, as you might have believed. I think they may believe that their best card is to say, hey, don't put it all at risk and wear the steady hand and go back to... Um, which means, you don't have a, which means you which don't have a promise. Yeah, you yeah. actually limit your promises yeah, so, and, you, so and maybe, you say responsibility. Yeah, maybe it is a, a more is less. But is that, a, is that then a, a strong and stable Theresa May type, type thing? And if you're coming up against a new generation argument, is that enough now? Is more of the same? It, it comes down to that really clear distinction. People so get bored more of the very same, quickly. Or actually this change thing. And on that note, 
Is that us? I think we're going to have to wrap it up. Hey, um, this weekend, um, mm -hmm. the multi-party debate on the nation. On the nation, multi-party debate. Oh, you're not calling it a minor party debate? Hell no. The mice <laughs> will rumble on the weekend. And, and no, I'm telling you, this fake candidate chair for you. Yeah, and so, yeah, switch on and see who's taking it. Um, and we should also mention that next Monday, um, there's a new book out called The Ninth Floor by um, B and Me. So that'll be on bookshelves um, on um, Monday. So go and buy one. Um, that's it for Caucus for this week. We're a month to go, guys. Oh, can you believe it? It's yep. one day short of a month. <laughs> hey, and the debates start next week. So next week on Caucus, we'll start talking about debates. Leaders debates. Yeah. Leaders debates. Um, get serious. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Um, thanks to Jeremy and to Calvin in the control room. Um, the music for uh, Caucus is from Copra Music. Um, do check us out on the app. The RNZ app is uh, there with all the best podcasts from RNZ. And we'll talk to you again next week.